May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. June 18, 2024 Tuesday of the eleventh week in Ordinary Time A reading from the first book of Kings Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Rise up, and descend to meet Ahab, the king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Behold, he is descending to the vineyard of Naboth, so that he may take possession of it. And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, You have killed. Moreover, you have also taken possession. And after this, you shall add, Thus says the Lord, In this place, where the dogs have licked the blood of Naboth, they shall also lick your blood. And Ahab said to Elijah, Have you discovered me to be your enemy? And he said, I have discovered you to have been sold, so that you would do evil in the sight of the Lord, behold, I will lead evil over you. And I will cut down your posterity. And I will put to death of Ahab whatever urinates against a wall, and whatever is lame, and whatever is last in Israel. And I will cause your house to be like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. For you have acted so that you provoked me to anger, and so that you caused Israel to sin. And about Jezebel also the Lord spoke, saying, The dogs shall consume Jezebel in the field of Jezreel. If Ahab dies in the city, the dogs will consume him. But if he dies in the field, the birds of the air will consume him, and so, there was no other person similar to Ahab, who was sold so that he did evil in the sight of the Lord. For his wife, Jezebel, urged him on. And he became abominable, so much so that he followed the idols that the Amorites had made, whom the Lord consumed before the face of the sons of Israel. Then, when Ahab had heard these words, he tore his garments, and he put haircloth on his body, and he fasted, and he slept in sackcloth, and he walked with his head downcast. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, Have you not seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Therefore, since he has humbled himself because of me, I will not lead in the evil during his days. Instead, during the days of his son, I will bring in the evil to his house. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my iniquity. Wash me yet more from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I know my iniquity, and my sin is always before me. To you only have I sinned, and have done evil before you. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Deliver me from blood, O God, you God of my salvation, and my tongue shall extol your justice. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor, and you shall have hatred for your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who persecute and slander you. In this way, you shall be sons of your Father, who is in heaven. He causes his Son to rise upon the good and the bad, and he causes it to rain upon the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Do not even tax collectors behave this way? 
and if you greet only your brothers, what more have you done? Do not even the pagans behave this way? Therefore, be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we transform the hurts inflicted upon us by others into opportunities for growth and grace through prayer? Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Matthew 5 verses 43 to 45 Jesus continues to deepen and clarify his call to his new command to love of others. The love to which he calls us is radical, total, and can be very challenging at first. He calls us to move far beyond the Old Testament understanding of justice, by commanding that we love everyone, including those who persecute us. This call to love is not an option, but a command. It's a requirement for every Christian. In implementing this command, Jesus gives us not only the command itself, but also offers some very practical advice on how we can achieve this depth of love. He says that we should not only love our enemies, but that we should pray for them when they persecute us. First of all, an enemy is one who tries to inflict some form of harm on us, and generally speaking, sins against us. The common response to these experiences is to defend ourselves and fight back. So the first step is to reject any such temptation. As Jesus said in the Gospel passage prior to this one, offer no resistance to one who is evil. Today's Gospel passage takes us even further. The practical advice our Lord gives is to pray for those who persecute you. This command not only requires that you reject the temptation to get back at a person or even to simply resist what they do to us. You must now pray for them. Praying for someone who sins against you is an act of the greatest charity and generosity. And it's a very practical way to imitate the abundant mercy of God. For that reason, Praying for your persecutors radically transforms you interiorly and makes you holy. In a sense, the evil another does to you has the potential to be transformed into a gift given to you because it gives you an opportunity to return prayer for an injury inflicted. And that is a very real and practical gift we must embrace by this new command of our Lord. Reflect today upon those for whom this new commandment calls you to pray. Whose sin has inflicted some hurt or injury upon you, or your family? Who do you hold a grudge toward? Whoever comes to mind, commit yourself to deep and sustained prayer for that person. Pray often for them, and continue that prayer for as long as the persecution continues. Doing so will transform any and every attempted malice issued toward you into grace for them and holiness for you. Let us pray. My Lord of abundant mercy, your command to pray for those who persecute me was first lived by you to perfection. You prayed for those who crucified you as you hung upon the cross. Give me the grace I need to not only forgive, but to also pray for those who have and continue to try to inflict harm upon me. Give me a heart so filled with mercy that every sin committed against me is transformed into love and my own holiness of life. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.